Hello everybody, my name is Mathis and welcome to a series I've been very excited to bring you for a long, long time, and that is Surviving Mars, a game by the Tropico devs, published by Paradox. It's all about getting a, a human colony up and running on Mars and managing it. And if you like stuff like RimWorld, or you know, if you wanna go even more complicated, Dwarf Fortress, then this is gonna be a game you're gonna to wanna to keep your eyes on. I'm recording this a few days before I'm allowed to post the video, and about a week in this or so before you're actually gonna have access to the game. However, I'm eager to show this game off because uh, when I saw it at Paradox Con, Paradox Con last year, I loved it, and I put about two hours or so into the game, just enough to get an idea how to get a colony up and running and really make it functioning, but I didn't want to go too far without exploring the rest of the game with you guys. That's kind of one of my favorite things about this channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the game as we play and explore it as we play as well. We're going to start a new game here. Um, we're not going to do easy start, though if it's your first time playing, pick easy start and just play it. It just teaches you the basics of what you need to know to play the game. Um, so, one of my favorite things about this game, it's, it's so simple and it's such a weird thing, but you get to kind of pick how your starting thing, your starting rocket to Mars actually ends up going. For instance, one of the things you have to do is pick your sponsor. Now, one of your sponsor really dictates is how much money you have at the beginning, how many rockets you'll have to play with in the beginning, which will bring you extra supplies or colonists, um, as well as a little, a few perks here and there. Uh, nothing major and nothing that's gonna influence your major play outside of the first opening hours, but enough, enough to really make you think about it. For instance, International Mars Mission is the easiest start. It gives you $30 billion to play with. You get 30, 300 research a day. You get 200 applicants who want to come to Mars over time that you get to play with as well. And you get a, uh, a large rocket payload of 70,000 kilograms of stuff you can pack onto it. Colonists never get earth sick, which is a mood that they'll get eventually. Uh, food supply from passenger rockets is, in is increased 10 times the normal amount and rockets synthesize fuel this is like literally baby's first mission to mars play with it i'm not going to because i played with that and an easier uh an easy what's considered easy um which i believe i played usa yep i played usa eight million dollars 300 research you actually get a large rocket and periodic additional funding but we're going to go into normal so it goes very easy easy me uh, normal and then hard uh i am going to go with normal and the one i've been keeping my eye on specifically and they're all you know different and i encourage you to check them out uh is space y in celebration of spacex and elon musk doing his thing so what do we get with space y well, we'll get five rockets which is Really, really nice. Uh, five rockets is quite a few, especially for the early game. Six billion dollars, uh, which is not too bad. 200 research a day, and we get 75 starting applicants. So not a ton of people are uh, when with Space Y are looking to come to Mars. Um, all drone hubs start with additional drones, which is nice. Uh, and it's 50% cheaper advanced resources, which is also really nice when we're looking to s advanced resources are something that we will eventually be able to make our on our own. But in the beginning, what we're going to need to do is buy them from Earth and have them shipped off to Mars and rocketed here. So we're going to go and that makes it cheaper for us. So we're going to go ahead. Space Y is going to be our mission sponsor. Next, we pick who are we? Who is the commander? And much like our sponsor, it'll give you bonuses. So an oligarch will give you uh, fuel production is increased by 25% and we get a bonus technology knowledge of arcology, uh, a politician if we were to pick them, all funding gains are increased by 20%, and Martian patents, repeatable tech that grants funding, all kind of have little bonuses. Again, not much. If it's your first time playing, I personally recommend Rocket Scientist. You get an extra rocket, um, which is really, really valuable, and you get the CO2 jet propulsion system. It's nice tech. Me personally, because we're going to be starting with a normal uh, a normal sponsor, and we're only gonna have four drones to start with, which we'll talk about that when we get to it. I'm gonna pick Inventor. So basically the idea here is, um, <coughs> when we send our, our rocket to Mars, we're not sending people first. Our first rocket is gonna be all robots, and their job, and our job, is to make the first set of our colony, the first ass, the parts of our colony suitable for human life. So we need to get power up and running. We need to get water up and running. We need to get oxygen up and running, and eventually like food and a and a place where they can live and sleep. Um, so the fact they're only starting with four drones, where if you pick the very easy start, you get like twenty to thirty, uh, is kind of low. It's gonna it does it's not impossible. It's just a slower start. But to kind of edge that off a little bit and maybe not make it as difficult. I'm thinking of going Inventor. The Inventor is someone who gives um, drones that are gradually optimized to work and construct faster for the first 100 days. So the first 100 days, drones are way, way quicker. Um, we also get autonomous hubs. Drone hubs no longer require power or maintenance, which is incredibly valuable. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pick that. Then we pick our, our logo, nothing major. Um, you know what? <laughs> because I've been doing Chiluminati podcast stuff, and I've been like reading a lot about aliens recently, just for fun, um, I'm going to pick the, the alien logo, because that's great. And then we get to pick mysteries. I'm not going to spoil any of these for you. I'm going to leave it on random. Basically, picking a mystery is... Something strange is going on on Mars. A little bit of a sci-fi element. So that's what we're going to go ahead and... We're going to leave it at random. I'm going to let the game pick it for us. Not going to worry about it. Uh, okay, cool. Now, we we kind of have our loadout, right? So this is our first shuttle. The first m shuttle to Mars itself and what is packed on it. I usually don't mess with it too much. Um, on the first shuttle, uh, it's already packed to capacity. As you can see, we have no kilograms available. Uh, we still have our $4.1 billion dollars. Uh, but it comes with the pre-spent money. So we're going to give an RC transport, which is valuable for collecting resources, four drones out the gate, uh, 15 polymers, 15 machine parts, and 15 electronics. These are all advanced resources. No basic resources, but that's fine. We can get those on Mars. And we're going to get three orbital probes. We're also going to get three pre-built drone hubs that we're gonna be able to put out on Mars ourselves. Uh, this is stuff, a drone hub that's gonna come with extra drones. They won't need power or maintenance um, and they've been pre-built. So they were basically built on earth, put into the ship and we can just place them for free uh, that, uh, when we get to Mars. Unlike where if you played a different maybe sponsor, um, you would have to build them yourself. So that's gonna be our first mission and I'm gonna be saying that's fine. And the, what we picked is gonna be a difficulty bonus of 140, meaning it's going to be a little bit more difficult um, than your average start, but not by much. All right, next is what, what the, the landing spot. Where do we want to land? Now, a few areas have been picked for us, or we could pick randomly. And if we pick randomly, you can see over here, uh, the resources on this area are pretty high in metal, decent in concrete, and high in water. But the threats here are dust devils, eh, 50-50 uh, on dust storms, lots of meteor activity, and cold waves, which is going to be important when people are here. Um, but I like to pick one of the pre-picked ones, just in case. Uh, let's see what we've got. N nothing is striking me quite yet. I don't like that, you know, we don't have a lot of metal areas. How about this? Elysium Beta. 15 degrees, relatively flat. Metals, concrete, and a decent amount of water. Not bad on dust devils, dust storms, and cold waves. And a 50-50 shot on meteors. Still going to be a little bit more difficult. Elysium Alpha. What is the difference? Why is this one considered less difficult than this one is? The temperature seems the same. We just lose a metal. I'm not quite sure I understand that. But that's fine. We'll go with Elysium Beta as our choice. Or Elysium... Yeah, Elysium Beta. More metals, please. Thank you very much. Okay, cool. Now we get to... Now we get some of the... To start getting into the game itself. And this is going to be the fun part. So. Welcome to Mars. Don't worry about this. I, I'll try and explain best I can. We're going to pause it real quick. These are our tips. So, this is where we've landed. And every time you pick a place, one section on the grid is randomly chosen and revealed for you. That's what this is right here. And this reveal will show you what's in that area. Um, you could choose not to go and land in this area and choose any of these other areas, but they're all unexplored. However, this one right here uh, is, is decent. This is a good start. As you can see just by hovering over it, it's got 100% buildable area, so all, all within this grid is, is uh, ripe for putting buildings down. Has a little over 2,000 concrete, uh, 84 metals. We have a lot of underground metals, though, and some rare metals as well, as well as almost 10,000 units of water. Uh, if we, if we want to learn a little bit more... We can zoom in and we can click on the water here and it says it's average grade water. The different types of grade from very high to very low will determine uh, the water type that you're getting and how much work has to be put in to get that. But uh, you'll see more of that as we go along. Over here, we have average grade underground metals. We have very low quality metals over here. Do we have concrete? We do. And it's very high grade concrete, which is nice. I like that a lot. Okay, well, what we could do is we could click our ship and land it, but we're not going to. I forgot to name the ship, damn it. And the dragon one. Oh, well. But we get three orbital probes. And I'm going to use these first. What these do is we get to instantly scan the grids uh, and, and reveal what's in them. So I'm going to go ahead and start instantly scanning the stuff around it and see if we can find some more good stuff. So right over here, 70% buildable. We might as well scan it. 
More concrete and more metals. Good. 56. Another 70% buildable area over here. Let's go ahead and scan that. Nothing. That's a whammy, unfortunately. Well, let's go 72 then. And we get more concrete over here too. All right. Well, not bad. Next up, we're going to pick this. So, uh, this is our rocket. This is where we're going to land our rocket. And the little gridded area, the little hexagonal area on the outskirts, shows the area in which that our drones that come with this rocket can work. They cannot go past that. They lose signal to the rocket and they can no longer operate. So they have to stay within that little area. So it's important to try and keep all your important resources right on the inside of that, at least in the very beginning. Um, we can rotate the rocket if we choose by hitting R, and we can do that with all of our buildings. I'm thinking we land right around here. I don't need to worry about the metals right now because to get metals, we need humans. Um, right now, I just want to worry about concrete and water. And it seems as though as long as I land right about here, we can get con double the to two sets of concrete and the water. So let's go ahead and land our rocket right there. And we're going to unpause the game and go ahead and do that. While the rocket's landing, we can also queue up areas to be scanned slowly. So we did instant scanning. However, the rocket can queue up up to five zones to be scanned. One actively scanning and four queued. And basically over time, these areas will be scanned for us and we'll learn what resources lie in them. All right, here comes our rocket. There it is. It's very quiet. Oh, no, there it is. We can hear it landing. Look at it. Gets our little alien symbol on it. It's awesome. I love it. Fantastic. All right. So here comes our, our, our RC rover. This guy can grab a bunch of materials on his own and bring them back. So if there's something far, far away we just want to grab and drag into an area where our drones can reach it, we can send our RC drone out. And here comes our four little adorable drones. All right pause let's get some basic stuff set up uh we found water congratulations we need to research stuff so we're gonna get a research tree and the research tree every time you play is randomized in some way this is not the same opening research that i've had the last time i played the game which is important to know um so let's see what we got drones and rovers moved 25 percent faster could be good uh sensor towers no longer require power and maintenance that could be very very good um, scientists and botanists have a plus 10 performance when working on their specialty. Nice. Um, rocket cargo space is increased by 10,000 kilograms. Useful later, not necessarily now. And new building farm produces food. Uh, again, useful, but maybe not quite yet. Why don't we go ahead with, we can queue up, up to five. Let's just queue up to two. Let's get the low G drive robotics, which is going to take a thousand research. Wow. Look at those. That's crazy. Um, and you can see over here. We're generating 200 research a day, so it's going to take some time. And then right after that, I'll start doing autonomous sensors. We could also, later on in the game, if we want to have Earth research things for us, we can actually outsource the research and have them pay. Uh, we can pay money for them to research it for us on Earth instead of in space. We're not going to worry about that now, though. All right. Let's get some basic buildings done, shall we, sir? Um, the first thing I want to do uh, is get some more drones up and running. So we came with three pre-packaged uh, drone Things. So if I right click, it brings up our building menu. Um, and the first thing I want is a drone hub. See how it says three there? It's because we have three built. Drone hubs are very important because they also extend how far the uh, the drones can work. So we need to, we can basically put them on the edge of this. So we want to go, see it's just on the outside. We don't, we don't want that. So what we want is the, we can basically, it, it extends how far drones can go out and work. For now, Let's go, let's go right out here. <sighs> you know what? Uh, yeah, we need to get it anyway, so we might as well drop it right here. Uh, they're going to run over and build this pretty quickly. And then once this is built, uh, it will have more drones running around doing us some favors. Um, just to get, kind of extend our area of influence. Uh, the other thing we need to get going is we basically need to prepare for human life. And that's going to require a, a few, a, a lot of steps. Power, water, oxygen to start. So first and foremost, let's go to power and let's get some power up and running. We have solar panels, large solar panels, and wind turbines. Solar panels are great. They're cheap, but they only produce two power. Large solar panels, a little bit more expensive. And if you look directly at the cost to building and the power produced, you'd be like, well, why would I build a regular, or why would I build a, a large solar panel that can build multiple Smaller solar panels get more power, but for less of a cost. The reason is buildings require maintenance. And if I build a small solar panel, the maintenance required to keep a bunch of sm small solar panels up and running as opposed to one or two large ones is not worth 
the trade-off, at least in my opinion. So what I like to do is I like to get a bunch of large solar panels up and running early. Um, so we're going to drop a few down, I think. Let's go ahead and grab another one. Let's get like three dropped right out the gate for now. Uh, and they're going to go ahead and we'll spill, we're will we going to speed up time. These guys are going to come over here and get this up and running. A boom. And now they're going to spawn a bunch of drones. And now we have a bunch of drones out and running. I'm not going to put any more of the other ones out quite yet. I don't think it's quite ready to do it. Uh, we don't really need that many drones. And we're just going to start kind of farming up some power. Um, the other thing I'm going to do as well is... I'm going to wait. That's like a battery. We're going to store it. We, the other thing we need is we need concrete. Concrete is like the building block of all of our buildings. We've got some very high quality concrete over here. So I'm going to go to construction, uh, or rather production, um, and not yet yeah, production. There it is. And concrete extractor. Now, one deposit can have multiple extractors on it. And the area of influence of your extractor is available right there. And on the top right, you can see how much we, we're going to extract. So... Uh, if you look at the status, it goes higher or lower depending on where we want to put this. So I'm going to try and get as much as I can. So 619 is going to be what we're going to grab. So I'm going to drop that there and grab it. Eventually, I'll put, maybe put another one up here and hit all this area over here. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Also, I'm going to go ahead and put up... I like to have this up and running. This is our resource overview. We can see what we have and what we need, basically. So this is how much money we have, how much we're producing in research, our grid resources, which we have no power, no oxygen, no water... Uh, basic resources, we're working on concrete right now, and then all of our advanced resources, which we will need to get buildings up and running, and some buildings require uh, advanced resources to maintain maintenance on them. All right. Hope you understood that. I'm going to be moving a little fast, but I feel like if you've played these games or you, you watch, you have an understanding of what's going on here. So that's going to be going on right now. Um, they're grabbing a bunch of resources off of this, and you can see, boom. All right, so they're not connected to anything is what they're yelling at me for. So let's go to power, and let's go ahead and grab power cables. And we're just going to go ahead and drag it across to this right here. Uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and build... Oh, that was a mistake. Oh, well, it's going to look a little ugly, unfortunately, I think. Oh, no, they, they rotate. I lied. Um, why don't we grab a battery? So here's the thing. Batteries are very, very useful. They store excess power. But they require one polymer for maintenance. And every so often, if we click on this building here, you can see this, this little bar. Basically, this is our maintenance bar. Once it fills up all the way, it will need to spend one of these, which is, this is a metal, to perform maintenance. Luckily, metals are super easy to come by early on. Um, but for the power accumulator, that's going to require a little bit more uh, out of us. They are polymers dependent. So I want to get a battery up and running, but I'm not entirely sure I want to do it quite yet. We'll see. Uh, let's get this up and running. Um, while, they, while they're doing that, let's actually slow down time a little bit here. And I want to drop a storage. And I'm going to just drop a universal storage depot kind of near our rocket. And this is going to just be an area where they drop pretty much everything, including uh, concrete. The other thing I'm going to put down early is a dumping site. Um, a very early on... It's unexplored. I don't want to risk it. Let's go right there. Uh, this concrete, the, the concrete producer produces concrete, but also produces a, uh, an excess waste rocks. They're just useless rocks. So they're going to be dumped over here so they don't get stacked all along this thing. So there you go. Now this thing is going to start creating concrete. That's so cool. And it'll put the concrete out over here when it's done. Boom. It's actually about to be nighttime, so we're likely going to lose power soon. Let's go ahead and build... Let's pause it. Let's set up a little bit of a grid. I like to try and keep things organized as best as I can. We're going to do this. I just want to kind of... Do like a little serpentine pattern here. And I'm going to do the same... Over here. Uh, I'll probably connect it... I wonder if I can connect it around... Go around. Uh, and I'm going to put a, some batteries on the other side of this. We'll put one battery for now. But I need the power to be stored and saved. So these drones are going to kind of do their thing. Speed things along. And we'll have power and concrete up and running in the uh, our first colony. So this is obviously not running because nighttime has come. And once nighttime rolls around, the solar panels aren't doing anything. So there's not much they can do. I'm going to send this RC transport out here 
And he's going to grab all of these minerals. He's going to fill himself up with metals. And I'm going to have him bring it back here so the drones have easier access to it. So they don't have to come all the way out. So you can see he's actually just kind of absorbing all these right now. And these drones are kind of just doing... They have nothing they can really do too much right now. We have a few drones doing the thing. They're actually unloading everything here. And this is almost built, which is nice. And then daytime's going to roll around pretty shortly. Um... I might want to drop some windmills up and running as well. Uh, a wind turbine or two. It might be a good idea to get a wind turbine up and running. But for now, this is fine. Let's get this, these, these running. And hopefully when this is all stored up, we'll be good. These guys are not really doing much. Oh, because they can't. Unfortunately. This is, uh, I had a misunderstanding. I thought these guys could do things. But they can't. No, maybe they can. I'm just dumb. They were just already done. So this is going to start storing power, uh, thankfully. And this is going to start getting concrete. Cool. Let's actually maybe put up a wind turbine. So we have at least generate some power during the day, you know? We can just get one right up there. So we'll get some solar. We have solar panels. Let's get four solar panels and one wind turbine. All right. Cool. Basic building stuff is finally starting to roll. It's starting to feel good. We're starting to move a little bit, uh, and I'm happy about it. Next is water. We need to start extracting this water. Um, and in order to extract this water, we need a water extractor. So let's pop into life support, grab a water extractor. And much like concrete, you can have multiple things extracting water at once. You just need to have it within the ring or of influence around the water extractor. And those little pipe icons is where pipes will connect. Um, oh, we want to build a sensor tower as well. That's something I totally forgot about. Um, we should probably get a sensor tower up. A sensor tower does not require much for maintenance, though it does require one electronic to get up and running. Um, but a sensor tower will basically allow us to scan the surrounding area faster. Uh, and that's, that's good to have. So let's just go ahead and drop this here then. And we are going to need to get a power cable running to it. Like so, and that should connect it pretty quick, quickly and easily. The wires are kind of ugly, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a huge fan of how the wires look. Uh, and we'll get a water extractor up and running as well. Let's keep it relatively... Yeah, that's fine. I'm trying to think of how I want to lay this out, but it doesn't really matter too much early on. Um, I just I overthink things a little bit. So let's get, drop that down. Whoop, whoop, we just had a meteor hit. Sector there it scanned. is. And we got a scanned sector. Um, <coughs> I felt that coming from a mile away, I'm telling you. <laughs> I knew that was coming. That's why I went silent. All right, let's get this done. Uh, the other thing we're going to want to put right next to it. Actually, let's wait. Let's wait. We don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, we are going to need power running out this way. Let's grab some power cables. Cable fault reported. A cable fault? We have a malfunctioning cable. That's unfortunate. Okay, and that should power it. Uh, all right, we got a cable fault somewhere. Well, that's not working because it's not. Oh, it's right here. It's sparking. And they're going to run over. They're taking care of it right now. Wow, that was that was actually really quick. I've never had a cable go faulty on me yet. And I've been playing for a few hours. So uh, at least they're taking care of it and, and doing their thing, which is nice. All right. So we've got this up and running. Uh, it's extracting water, but it's not doesn't have anywhere to put it. That's why this pipe icon is up and running. It has no pipes for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go life support, grab some pipes. We connect it over here. And I think what I'm going to do is drag it. We don't need to go far. We're just going to do, like, four pipes here. And pipes are going to be kind of the lifeblood of, uh, of this colony up and uh, getting this colony up and running. Pipes will carry water and oxygen. Uh, and we're going to put a water tower so it has somewhere to store it right next to it. We'll just put a water tower right there. So once it's up and running, it'll actually be pumping water up and storing it here. And we'll actually have uh, water uh, stored, which is fantastic. And we'll have the very first start of our Sector wonderful... Anomaly found. Ooh, nice. We can't scan anomalies yet. We're going to have to get a special rover to scan anomalies, by the way. Which is what these are. These are anomalies. We'll get to those eventually. Um, let's bring you over here. 
I'll actually put you right in the center. And the drones, when they need metal, should just kind of pull it up pretty quickly. All right, and now we've got uh, our water tower grabbing water. There it is. And it's going to fill up very slowly, but it's going to. Uh, the next stop is an oxygen producer. Um, and that's what we are going to call Moxie. And I'm going to probably keep it right along the same line here, maybe over on this end, because it's going to all use the same pipe system. Uh, so I'm going to end up building a Moxie plus an oxygen tank uh, to keep things rolling here. I'm very itchy in my nose. Um, but I think for now, this is a good stop to the episode. We've got, we've shown you how to get your uh, ship up and running. And of course, we've got uh, water on Mars, which is a good first step. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, this is all being recorded in backlog uh, and I'm gonna be recording quite a lot of it. So if you're enjoying it, let me know. It's the best way to do it is to hit, this, uh, hit the like button and drop a comment for uh, to know if you like this new series. And if you wanna see more just like it, Hit the subscribe button and that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.